All right, so I want to talk now about the energy that's transported by a wave. Um, uh, all, all waves can carry energy and information, and we want, want to be able to quantify that. Let's consider the energy that's carried by our wave on a string. Um, what we're going to do is look at the um, instantaneous value of, well, let me write this down, so the power um, if delivered to an object by an external force can be written as the external force uh, dotted into the velocity uh, that the object that is being acted on uh, has at that instant. Okay. Um, here our object is the string and so um, we have to think carefully about how uh, power flows because as this wave propagates down a string what's happening is the you know one end of the string I move the string up and down and by doing that I exert a force on the string okay but then the pattern propagates because the string one bit of the string will exert a force on the neighboring bit and transfer that energy into the motion of the string propagating down the string okay so we want to uh, consider that uh, scenario and what we'll do let me just draw a wave pattern here okay here's our wave pattern that's um, propagating down the wave uh, down the string let's say it's going like this what we're going to do is consider the power being transferred um, across an imaginary line okay so let's pick a line on our rope here this is at some location X um, and we're interested in the power that is being transmitted from um, this side from the red portion into the black portion so our external force is going to be uh, executed by um, the the rope or string to the left of this imaginary line and I'm imagining the energy flowing into this other piece of the rope or string here let me make it black and this continues on okay um, all right, and so I'm going to consider um, this half as, as the object that's being acted on and this half as the external force, okay? So what I want to look at is the force that the left half um, exerts on the right half, okay? And the force in, 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 at this location, okay? Um, so the force is the tension force um, that points up this way. Okay, maybe I'll draw it in green so it's clear. Okay, here's my tension force that acts upward at that location. Um, now the um, the vertical component of the force is the one I'm interested in. So what I'm going to look at is the power that goes into making the piece of the the string move up and down vertically. Okay, and so the force I'm interested in then is going not going to be the horizontal component but it'll be the vertical component here, Fy, okay? And now this is the tension. So it turns out this force, like when we considered deriving the wave equation, we looked at a piece of the string that had tension forces acting on either side, and we said that the force acting on either side um, can be written as T times dy dx. Now we wrote it as T times sine theta, right? Where this is theta here. Um, but, and then we argued from a small angle approximation that theta, sine theta goes like theta, and then I didn't prove it to you, but I made the, made the case that we can equate theta um, to the slope of the, of the string at the location in interest, of interest, okay? So now, just to be clear, so when we derived the wave equation, we argued, I argued that the total force on a little bit of the string actually went like the second derivative not the first derivative um, and that's if you include the the fact that if you take a little bit of the string right here and you look at the force on the other side you can see that the net force is going to be the difference between these two tensions one pulling um, pulling back to the left one pulling back to the right and the remnant of that is going to be a second derivative but if I just consider the force not on the, this little bit but actually on this whole um, piece of string the only force acting, I ignore all the internal forces to the right, and just consider this external force that's to the left, the green one that I drew. And in that case, I just pick up um, a first derivative for the force. Okay, so we view this force as the 
piece of string to the left acting on the piece of string to the right trying to transmit this wave and in doing so is going to transmit the energy of the wave also to the piece on the right okay so with that now we can write down that the power transmitted from the left half to the right half is just the force exerted by the left half on the right half dotted with the velocity we just argue that the force goes like the tension times dy dx at the location of my arbitrary split and then the velocity is just given the this is going to be the vertical motion of the of the string the string up and down okay this is not the wave velocity this is the motion of the string as it responds uh, moving up and down as the wave pattern comes by so that's going to be dy time uh, dy dt okay all right, so this expression is uh, valid for an arbitrary y, okay? But we can evaluate it for a sinusoidal um, waveform. Okay, let's take a, get a new page here to do that. Um, so if I take y uh, is some amplitude times cosine of kx minus omega t, we choose minus because we'll define right going to be positive x and so this will have a this will be a rightward propagating wave um, so then we have that dy dx is equal to k which is the wave number remember uh, a times uh, minus ka sine theta uh, sine theta sine kx minus omega t um, and then dy dt, the velocity of the rope that goes into our power expression, um, will be omega a sine of kx minus omega t. Okay, and so now the instantaneous power that is transmitted at this location from the left half of the string to the right half of the string can be written as um, so k times omega times a squared um, sine squared of kx minus omega t. Okay, and this is a function of position and uh, time because now I'm the x indicates this arbitrary location that I split the string in half, and now I can pick a different location, and the same calculation applies. And so this will tell me the power being transmitted um, from one part of the rope to the other uh, anywhere along the rope at any instant in time. Okay, and you see it oscillates. Okay, so in fact, um, the the way the power transmit is always positive. Okay, so you're always transmitting energy, um, but it can go up and down in, in magnitude, how much energy is going across um, that point. Okay, all right, so um, I can... Um, Oh, and I forgot attention. I apologize. There's a T out front here. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so I can write this if I choose, acknowledging that um, uh, K is equal to um, omega over V. Okay, where v now is the the wave speed, so this is going to be omega times the square root of mu over t. I should be careful since I'm using v here and v above. Let me write v phase because that's the propagation speed of the wave. Um, I can, oops, rewrite this power uh, then as root mu t, okay, times omega squared a squared sine squared of kx minus omega t. Okay, and I do that um, just so you can expose um, the dependence on the string and the tension in the string. And this omega I choose when I set the wave. When I oscillate the end of the rope, I choose that. Um, and so I can see explicitly the, the dependence of the power transmitted on the weight of the rope and the tension in the rope. Okay. Okay, so we wrote down an expression that gives us the instantaneous uh, power as a function of time um, and, and space, okay? And if I plot it in either time or space, um, the power will 
look something like this, okay? Um, and so as the wave, and this is one snapshot in time. Now later on, this will move, of course, you know, will be, you know, at some point later in time, it might look like this, okay? And this pattern will pass by the rope as the wave passes by, okay? Now, often we're interested not in the instantaneous power a wave transmits, but kind of the time average power. So for the waves on the string that we're going to make, the frequency of the wave is pretty low, okay? We'll be able to see it move in time. But we'll talk about lots of other types of waves, sound waves, light waves, so forth and so on, where the time oscillation of the wave is incredibly fast. So take a light wave. It can be terahertz um, type frequencies or even or higher than that. And so this is incredibly fast. So this, you, you don't, if you're you know, standing out in the sun, <laughs> feeling the power of the sunlight on you, you don't notice the fact that it's oscillating in the way that I've drawn here, the fact the power I haven't proven that this is valid for light waves yet, but I'll argue the same arguments will apply, and you'll get an oscillatory power uh, from the, the photons, from the light waves as they hit you, um, that you're not going to notice, okay? So what you're interested in is kind of the time average power, okay, that, um, that you see. So what you can do, um, so now if I draw it, let me get rid of that and then draw something very similar. I'm going to draw it in time. So if I look at the power at one instant, one position in space, it has the same form, okay, basically to look like this. And the average value of the power is somewhere in here. Okay, so of course it's higher in one instance and lower in another, but on average I feel some average value of the power. So what we can do is define um, a time average, okay? And so what I'll say is that the... Um, I'll use brackets to indicate um, I'm averaging over time. We can also call it the average power. Will be the integral of this expression um, over one period of this oscillation of p instantaneous dt, and then I normalize that by dividing through by the period. Okay, so this will give me an average value of p over that time frame. Okay. Um, now, the only thing in this expression that depends on time is the, the sinusoidal function. And so it turns out, I will not prove it to you, you're welcome to, to prove this to yourself, but if I take the integral from 0 to t, okay, of sine squared of um, my kx minus omega t. Now I can just go and pick a value. Um, for x, and we can pick 0 to make life easy, okay? Um, and if I normalize this now to t, okay, which is, again, t is going to be equal to 2 pi over omega, you can prove that this is equal to 1 half, okay? All right, and so um, the answer then for the instantaneous, sorry, for the average power um, our p average is just going to be equal to one half times the maximum uh, power, instant, ma maximum of the instantaneous power, which is going to be one half root mu t times omega squared a squared. Okay. All right. So let me stop there.